In the case of a univariate Gaussian distribution, it's relatively easy to understand what the mean value and the variance, what that tells us about our data and about the density function. But in the case of a multivariate Gaussian distribution, it's a little bit harder to see. So in this short video, I quickly want to step through some examples, looking at what the mean vector and the covariance matrix in a multivariate Gaussian distribution, what that tells us and what we can see just from um, the values in these vectors and matrices. The multivariate Gaussian distribution over a feature vector x, um, which in general can be in d dimensions, is defined in this way. Um, and this d here is exactly what we have there. And it is specified uniquely by a mean vector mu and a covariance matrix sigma. Here is a plot of the density of some multivariate Gaussian over a two-dimensional feature vector. So we've got, uh, in this case, x um, is equal to just x1 and x2. And that makes it possible to actually visualize this. As a reminder, the Gaussian can be defined over more than just two dimensions. So informally, in this two-dimensional case, the mean vector mu tells us the center of this bump where it's located. And the covariance matrix, sigma, influences how sharp or how flat the bump is, as well as the orientation of the bump. The mean vector is relatively easy to understand and visualize, but the covariance matrix is a little bit harder. So let's take a look at a few examples. So in all of the examples, we're going to look at, still at a two-dimensional multivariate Gaussian. And what we're doing is we're looking at the probability density function, the PDF, basically from the top, with lighter colors indicating higher PDF values and darker colors indicating lower values. And what we're doing here is we're looking at a kind of arbitrary multivariate Gaussian distribution um, in two dimensions. And what I mean with that is that its covariance matrix has values in all of the positions in the two by two matrix. The mean vector here specifies the location of the center of the bump. You can think about it in that way. So here we can see that here's the center and at the center, we've got a value of zero for X1 and a value of one for X2. Now the spread and the slant of this bump is actually determined by these parameters in here. This parameter here actually gives us the variance if we just considered x1, and this gives us the variance if we just considered x2. So you can see that um, if we just think of the data as being spread across x1, then the spread this way, which is captured by that number, is less than the spread this way, which is captured by this number. And these numbers here, they're non-zero, which tells us that x1 and x2 is correlated in some way. They tell us something about uh, one another. If I know that x1 is around here, then I know that x2 should be somewhere in, you know, in this range here. And that is what causes the slant in this uh, multivariate Gaussian. So let's look at a few cases where that actually doesn't happen. So here is what we call the standard multivariate Gaussian. It's got a mean of z exactly zero. So it's got the zero vector and its center is at zero, zero in the two dimensional case. And it's got a covariance matrix that's the identity. And in this case, both x1 and x2 has a variance of one and one, and they're um, uncorrelated. They don't tell us anything about uh, one another. I don't know anything about x2 irrespective of where x1 lands and vice versa. You could also have a multivariate Gaussian with different values on the diagonal. If they're the same, then the bump will basically either flatten out here or it will become sharper depending on the variance. And um, that's called a spherical Gaussian. It's something that will still be like kind of round. Um, perfectly spherical in the two features, but it will either be flatter or sharper than the values here. We can relax that a little bit more. So let's look at another example. Here we've got a multivariate Gaussian, but it's not spherical anymore. 
the two uh, variables x1 and x2 are still uncorrelated. They don't tell us something about each other. So we've got values of 0 and 0 here. But here the spread around x1 is smaller than the spread around x2. And we call that, sometimes we call that the diagonal uh, multivariate Gaussian distribution.